So um, welcome everyone. Oh, sorry, Sarah. I was just going to say welcome everyone from Summer Bridge and from other uh, organizations on campus. Um, we're excited to have you today. So we're going to have a wonderful contingent of people from the Brookings community at the city of Brookings, uh, some other organizations here in town that are going to be chatting a little bit about why Brookings is the greatest place on earth um, and why we're so excited to have you joining us for the next four years or beyond. So it's all yours. All right. Thanks for that introduction, Justin. Welcome to Brookings, everybody. We're so excited to have you here. It's so exciting to have all this energy back in our town again. We just love move-in weekend and all those fun activities that are involved in all the students coming back to Brookings. So we have a packed agenda here today and we have some wonderful people here to talk about um, some of their insight tips on Brookings, some um, great ways to volunteer and get included in some of these different things. Um, within our community and then also to provide some great resources, go to information tools that are available um, within the various parts of our community. Um, really great people in this Zoom meeting. If you have any questions, we'd all be happy to help answer any of those. Um, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, feel free to send those via chat um, or just ask questions throughout um, this workshop. And so we're going to get started here today with a little welcome video from our mayor and also our city manager. Good afternoon, Jack Rabbits. We are so excited to have you here. And I'm Brookings Mayor Keith Corbett, and in addition to being a mayor, I am a jackrabbit too. So we are just so excited to have you move into Brookings and, and of course South Dakota State University. And uh, I can just tell you that how much we love you coming to Brookings and the energy you bring to our community. You know, we say that, and I, I think you'll really have to struggle to find somebody in Brookings that's not a jackrabbit, because I think we all are. And if nothing else, we certainly go and support our students and the jackrabbits. You know, you'll find also that all the city council, plus me, the mayor, are all jackrabbits, and we're so proud to tell the world that we're jackrabbits, and you will be also. So enjoy your time at South Dakota State University and Brookings, and go Jacks! Hello, my name is Paul Brazino, and I'm the city manager for Brookings, South Dakota. On behalf of the community and our organization, we'd like to welcome back everyone to SDSU. Look forward to seeing everyone's face back out in the community. Welcome and enjoy your time here. All right, thank you so much for that special message from our mayor and city manager. Next, we're gonna pass things off to Chelsea Bakken. She works for the city of Brookings and she's gonna provide some information on ways to get involved in our Brookings community and some of the different aspects and tips that Brookings has to offer. So I'll pass it along to you, Chelsea. Well, I would like to say welcome to Brookings, all of you Jackrabbits. It's really exciting to have you here. Um, as the mayor said, it, you just bring an energy to the community that we just love. Um, I'm the public information officer for the city. And in this introduction that you just saw, there, there was two individuals that spoke. And in most city governments, you know, a lot of people hear from the mayor, but you might be wondering who was that other guy that was talking? And that is Paul Brzezino, our city manager. So I'm going to go back to a little bit of a, a, a a government lesson right now and there are four, uh, five different types of local governments and in a lot of communities you have a mayor and a city council and they work together to put together policy and they oversee the departments and things within the city and they manage it but in our community we have what is called a council manager form of government so both of the individuals that you're speaking really serve a very important role in our community and what that means is you know our mayor and our council locally, they're elected by the voters, the people that live in the community. And the mayor and the council here, they have the same voting powers, but the mayor is who speaks for the council and he also speaks for the voters, you, the people in the community. Um, but the city manager is also very important. He's a local leader as well. He's appointed by the mayor and the city council, or she, um, uh, but our local city manager is Paul Brzezino. And that person, 
uh, runs the city operations. So basically what they do is they manage the inner workings of the city and the departments, like, which are things like the airport, um, they work with the city engineer, community development, the streets department, parks recreation, forestry, so all the beautiful parks that you see here in town, the landfill, the library, the police department, and the fire department, all the people that help keep our community safe. So to really simplify that, a council manager form of government, which is the form of government that we have here in Brookings, which I think is really important to know, um, the mayor and the council are equal. Um, the mayor is the spokesperson for the community and they create the policy and the ordinances. And then our city manager, he's really the one that Paul, he's really the one that's in charge of um, the community operations. So he enforces what the, the council's vision is. Um, so going back to that, I wanna move into talking about leadership and leadership opportunities that we have in our community. As Mayor Corbett mentioned, all of our city council members, and I have a picture of them right here, all of these people right here, they are jackrabbits. They are graduates from SDSU. And you know, that's, that's pretty exceptional to see how many of our council members are city leaders based from what their experience was, you know, in the community and at SCSU, but it's not just that. Um, also, you know, a lot of our city leadership teams, so the people that help, you know, run and oversee those different departments, they're jackrabbits as well. I'm a three-time jackrabbit. Um, in fact, our uh, Mike Strucker Community Development Director, he was an announcer for SCSU games on the radio for years. And uh, going back to our council, you know, uh, Nick Wendell, one of our city councilors, he served in student leader positions at SDSU while he was getting his undergrad. And then also Dan Hansen, who just recently um, had his term expire with city council. He was also on SDSU's leadership um, during his time at SDSU. So SDSU, the place where you are right now is a really wonderful place to develop leadership opportunities and to become a, a, a develop leadership skills, but it doesn't just stop at that. And I, I want, you, want to mention why what I'm saying matters to you. Here at the city of Brookings, we have 29 active boards, committees, and commissions that are essential to our local democratic process, to our local government. And a lot of people don't realize that they can get involved in these committees and commissions while they are attending SDSU. Several of these different commissions have opportunities and uh, appointments that are specifically for SDSU students. And what these people do is they come in, they help come up with maybe research or help provide guidance to the city council and their decision making opportunities. So they help guide what happens in the community. So as an SDSU student, you have a big opportunity to be very, very involved in what happens in the Brookings community, not only at SDSU, but in local government. And currently, we have three um, boards, committees, and commissions that are currently seeking student, or currently see, seeking appointments. And uh, one of them has an exclusive SCSU appointment position. And then the others, uh, and that's for a one-year term generally. And then the others have just a regular appointment term, and that's for three years. And SCSU students can definitely apply to be on those boards as well. It would just be a little bit of a longer term. So those uh, current opportunities that are available right now, uh, the Human Rights Commission, um, it's a very important commission in our community. It has a one term, one year term opening for an SCSU student. Currently also our Public Arts Commission has a three year term opp opportunity available. And our Sustainability Council, which helps guide our uh, city council in like recycling and different ways that our community can be, you know, help sustainability efforts, they also have a three-year term. So those are all available right now if you would like to volunteer. Um, you can uh, fill out an application and it's available on our website, www.cityofbrookings.org, and it's under the board section. Or you can just stop by the City County Government Center. It's right by downtown. It's a big tan building that says City County Government Center on the outside. You can't miss it. You can stop into the second floor to our administrative offices and ask for Bonnie, and she can get you lined up with everything that you need and help you, um, you know, find out more about what's available. But since there are those 29 different boards, there's something that kind of meets everybody's um, taste. I guess I could say. So go on to our website, look at what we have available and think about if there's something 
a way that you would like to be involved in our community and if you'd like to be involved in one of those boards. Thank you, Chelsea. Great opportunities there. Um, I'm, I'm excited that you brought that up. That's, that's really important. As a student, I don't know that I was fully aware of that because I too am a jackrabbit. Um, I get the opportunity to work with Sarah and we'll, we'll do our intros a little bit later. But right now, um, I get to introduce Ms. Ashley Bigger. Ashley is director of Downtown Brookings, um, responsible for the development um, and execution of programs and events for the downtown area which is lovely and exciting and vibrant. And um, she is doing a great job with that. And in addition to that, she is busy. Um, you may have noticed as you've driven through town or if you haven't yet, please look. But almost every window, business window in this beautiful community has um, her touch on it through her creative impressions business in which she does um, window paintings um, and graphics and stuff. So Ashley, you're up. Thank you so much for the nice intro there, Jennifer. As Jennifer said, I am Ashley Bigger. I'm the director of downtown Brookings with the Brookings Area Chamber of Commerce. Um, I've been in my position now for a little over a year, so I'm really excited to be part of the chamber. Um, a lot of people don't know what the chamber is. It was actually founded back in 1938, so that's a long time ago. Um, its goal is to promote, connect, enrich, and advocate for the business community. So we're really looking to provide opportunities for businesses to succeed. Um, not just businesses though, but employees so and students. So for example, SDSU is a member since we're a membership based organization. Uh, SDSU is a member so you all are invited to, to come attend our many events. Um, we have over 500 members um, and we correct all cross sections of the business community. So we have actually nine committees underneath that and so we kind of all group together how um, Chelsea was talking about different boards and commissions. We have committees. So some of our really attended ones with events are like the Will Luncheons, that's Women in Leadership and Learning, uh, Connect 2140 Mixers and, and other events with that group. They have, a, they have a really fun Christmas event called the Blitzen where they wear different, like some one year they did ugly sweaters and whatnot. So it was a really great event um, and all sorts of kinds of trainings as well as opportunities for you to connect with different businesses, which is really important as you grow in your professional and um, personal experiences to make those connections and so that's what we really look to do uh, with the chamber too and could help you out with that uh, but as Jennifer said I'm the director of downtown Brookings and so what I look to do is to help our downtown businesses um, in our community sector there so the, the downtown is really looked at as the heart of a community um, and so we're really we're really blessed to have such a wonderful downtown uh, in Brookings South Dakota and I've had a fair share of uh, different Students come underneath my wing in the past and it always interests me how, how I hear that people don't get downtown as much. So I really, really, really want to encourage you all to stop downtown, to, to explore downtown. It's so fun to walk. You can, you can just go park in one of the many parking lots uh, we have on our website. You can see the different parking places that you can go. One is at the city county building that Chelsea was talking about, but we have so many different businesses to look at all the way down from the movie theater right now. If you can't you can go over in there too, check out those movies. They have a lot of fun things going on, but walk the whole block. I mean, walk all the way down. The, the downtown actually expands along seven different blocks uh, long and then it goes wide too. So, you know, go, go all the way down from, from the movie theater all the way down to Eponymous. Walk the side streets to Wooden Legs where they have amazing pizza. Walk to the Brookings Arts Council where you can pick up an extra fun class with your friends or check out their online ones. Uh, shop our downtown boutiques like Jayella and Honeycomb and the Carrot Seed. If you need a gift, if you need something for yourself, I mean, those are some really great places to visit. Um, you will find no other customer service like the businesses that we have here in Brookings. They are phenomenal. Um, and then check out the murals too, what Jennifer was talking. We have some amazing murals in downtown. I actually have about seven, so explore the alleyways, and I've done some extra bonus murals on windows, but just check it out. Take some pictures, take those selfies. You can always uh, hashtag DTV town. Uh, it's all kind of fun, and we'll link to our Instagram account, but you know, we really want you to come and hang out and study in our downtown bistros, such as Cool Beans or Cottonwood. You know, really get to know Brookings. Um, like, like Chelsea said too, uh, I'm also a jackrabbit, so um, it's not just a great place to just come and learn. 
and, and leave, it's a great place to stay. And so we really want to, at least if you're here only for a short time during those four or, or more years that you're here at SDSU, we really want you to enjoy your stay while you're here with us and, and get to know our community. We'd love to help you. Um, Brookings is an amazingly collaborative community. Um, I've had the opportunity to volunteer a lot. Um, and one of those volunteer opportunities is actually with one of the events now that I, that I host, which is downtown at sundown. Uh, which unfortunately we weren't able to have this past summer, but we're really, really, really looking forward to kick it off again um, next summer in 2021. It's a seven week long concert music series outside downtown Brookings. And so it's absolutely free. There's food vendors, music. And so we have things going like that on all year long. Um, you can check out, I have up here different different websites and why not. Um, just thought that would be easier to put that up there. So you can check those out. Uh, for all our events, um, downtown or not downtown, you can go check out our website at uh, thebrookingschamber.org. Uh, we also have an Instagram and Facebook account for both of those. And then also too, we have a different downtown specific website that you can check out to, you know, even if you're, you're looking for things and you're like, I don't know what's downtown, you can just look in there and go on there. There's a map and everything. Um, so that's downtownbrookings.com. And then we also do have a Facebook and Instagram page. So we're constantly updating those with plenty of opportunities and I think what you'll hear later too from Heidi um, is that there's plenty of opportunities to volunteer and get involved beyond, you know, connecting with us at different events. Um, and so I think you'll find that Brookings is really an amazing community. We are so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for, for joining us with the Jackrabbits. Thanks, Ashley. As Ashley mentioned, we love downtown. I know last Saturday, you know, it's so fun to just spend your morning there. You can get a coffee and you can walk through all these great shops and then get lunch. And there's just so many great activities um, that downtown Brookings has to offer. So I hope you have the opportunity to check those out while you guys are here in Brookings. Um, our next speaker, Heidi Gullickson and Allison Schmidt are gonna talk about some of the resources that Brookings Area United Way has to offer. And like Ashley said, there's lots of different volunteer opportunities. So I'll pass that along to you, Heidi. All right, thank you. And thanks everybody for joining. Uh, just to make sure everybody knows, I am also a jackrabbit. We'll get that right out there. And I actually, my husband's a jackrabbit and we have two kids that are currently, well, I guess Kayla graduated and but is starting her master's program um, as a jackrabbit too. And then Carson is a sophomore jackrabbit, so. All right, so I'm gonna share my screen here. Um, Allie, while I'm figuring this out, why don't you introduce yourself and then we'll jump in. Yes, hi everyone. My name is Allison Schmidt uh, and I am also a fellow Jackrabbit. I just graduated actually last year in 2019. Um, so just couldn't get enough of Brookings and decided to stick around. <laughs> and I am with the Helpline Center here in Brookings, I should add that. All right, everybody see my screen now? The presentation, yep, all right. So um, kind of like Ashley said, sometimes people aren't quite sure what a Chamber of Commerce is. Um, sometimes people aren't quite sure who United Way is or what they do. And so kind of just a quick presentation to show some of the, some of the things that we're involved in in the community. Um, in our local United Way, there's two of us. So Brianna Doran is the other employee with United Way, but luckily, we get to share office space with Allie, so that's fun. Um, when we talk about what do we do, so our mission is to uniting people, sharing resources, inspiring hope, and enriching lives for a stronger Brookings community. So when, when people you know, say, well, what's your elevator speech? Um, I really like that we, we get to fight for the health, education, and financial stability of every resident in Brookings County. And that includes college students, that includes somebody who's been here for 20 years and somebody who moved in last week. And so we, we really want to be the hand raisers, you know, the, the people that get involved, the game changers, just because it's always been one way doesn't mean that's the way it always has to be. And then the problem solvers. When we see an issue in the community, how do we come together and, and change that? How do we fix those problems? And so we're gonna see if we can, I didn't check this before, we'll make sure that we can get this to work here. Okay. 
Okay, so just a quick little video to show um, some of our partners and that we do it. Oops. Okay, there we go. Um, oh, geez. Okay. Technology is hard for some of us older folks and learning. Thank you for being patient. Um, so, so, okay, what does it mean to fight for the health, education, and financial stability? So we, um, we do a large fundraising campaign each year in the community. So you'll see the big thermometers up. Um, those, that is our fundraiser. And so when we raise those dollars, then we help support other nonprofits in our community. And they do a, a wide range of different things, but it's all, always in that health education and financial stability or self-sufficiency arenas. And but, okay, what kind of things in health? Well, we help to support mental and emotional wellness or access to health services. Um, and self-sufficiency, maybe it's just access to basic needs or uh, independent, secure living uh, education. It might be school readiness programs for the little mites, all the way up to adult empowerment, making sure that um, adults never stop learning as well. So we do that. And these are all of our partners that we work with. And so um, as you guys are here and getting into Brookings and, and learning our community, um, these are great resources out there in the community for either volunteers or maybe even, maybe you're not sure, you need some help, you're not sure where to go. Um, these are some of those organizations that help people in our community, whether it's, it's we need access to food or maybe it's, um, I, I need some extra assistance in this area or just, I, hey, can somebody teach me how to do budgeting? All of those kind of things are included in these kind of organizations. And so how do, how do people get involved with United Way? Um, you know, giving, it takes money to do things. So we are fundraisers. And then, but like I said, that money stays here locally and goes out to other nonprofits. And then if you're, you know, passionate about something and you wanna get involved, everyone can be an advocate, sharing your story and and being an advocate out there for whatever organization or, or problem that we're working on to solve. Um, being an advocate and sharing your voice is really, really important. And then volunteering. Um, and Allie will dive into that a little bit more, but there's lots and lots of ways to get involved. So I'm gonna pass it over to Allie um, to Allie, I will keep moving this, but you can talk now. Sounds great. Thanks, Heidi. Uh, yes, so I'm Allison Schmidt with the Helpline Center. Perfect. So our mission at the Helpline Center is making lives better by giving support, offering hope, and creating connections all day, every day. Uh, so that mission statement kind of uh, is just the umbrella for all of our different programs that we have at the Helpline Center. Uh, and you may have heard of one or even a couple, but we have three main programs that a lot of people don't know that we do all three. So the first one is our 211 Helpline, which usually is the one that most people are familiar with. Our second one is Volunteer Connections, which is what I work directly with here in Brookings. Uh, and then lastly, we have our Suicide and Crisis Support. So the Helpline Center does serve the entire state of South Dakota to provide connections, support, offer resources, and hope to individuals with thoughts of suicide. Yeah, so like I said, I work with our Volunteer Connections program, uh, and this is the only part of the Helpline Center that is not statewide. So this program is only in the Brookings area, Black Hills area, and then Sioux Empire. Uh, but we essentially run a database uh, where we work with all of the different nonprofits in those three areas to list all of the available volunteer opportunities for people looking to get involved in their local communities. Uh, so we make sure to constantly keep that list updated uh, and it just has hundreds of volunteer opportunities for those of you looking to get involved with something more here in Brookings. Uh, and it's a really nice search feature that we have for you guys. We're able to connect you with projects that are specifically aligned with your interests uh, and your time frame of being able to volunteer. So for example, if you know that you love working with animals uh, or with youth, you're able to specify that when you're searching for volunteer opportunities in the area. 
Um, if you also are looking to volunteer with a group of friends or uh, if you have some court ordered volunteering, you're able to search it by that as well. Um, but we also do weekly texts and emails, just highlighting some of the maybe uh, really needed volunteer positions going on right now, especially with COVID. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, also those texts are going out as well each week to just help get the word out about some of those different volunteering opportunities. Uh, and our volunteer database website is just right there down at the bottom at volunteer.helplinecenter.org. I would uh, recommend anybody who wants to pull their phone out and do that quick text and then you're just automatically signed up and ready to go. Yes, yeah, so right here is just a kind of a screenshot of what our database looks like when you're going to be searching for some of those volunteer opportunities. So you're able to type in a keyword of what you're maybe looking to do. Uh, kind of specify what type of schedule you'd want, if it's just a one-time volunteering opportunity that you're looking for or something more ongoing. Uh, and then also you're able to choose distances that you're willing to travel for it and the specific date ranges. So good search engine for you if you're trying to find something super specific because there are quite a few listings. Great, so the next portion of or our second program, I should say, is the 211 helpline. So this is statewide now, and you are simply able to dial 211 for pretty much any type of assistance that you need. Any sort of information that you can think of that you can't uh, seem to find in Brookings. We have a comprehensive list of resources of just all of the different things available for, for you guys coming to Brookings that you might need. You're able to find financial, family, health, or disaster related assistance. Uh, and you, this is a 24 seven service for you guys. So you can call any time of night if you're needing some help uh, and it's all free too. So there's many different ways then that you can get a hold of the 211 helpline uh, that shows it right at the bottom there, but you're able to do an online help request. You're able to call 211, text your zip code, uh, email or use our guided search option if you don't feel like talking to someone on the phone uh, to ask for that information. We have it all listed online as well, so you're able to look for it there. And then our last program is the suicide and crisis support. So the Helpline Center is South Dakota's leader in suicide prevention and response, and we are actually the only accredited suicide prevention intervention and aftercare organization in South Dakota. Uh, so this hotline, 1-800-273-8255, is available to everyone in South Dakota 24-7. Uh, and it's very free and very confidential. Um, but it's not just for suicide. Like I said, it's just all crisis support. Um, if it has anything to do with depression or mental illness, uh, drugs, alcohol, relationships, uh, you're able to call that number and get the help that you need. Uh, but besides this, our program also offers suicide prevention trainings, crisis support, and survivor services. So there's lots of different programs that are kind of underneath this one that we offer along with just having that hotline for people to call. All right, and then lastly, we have our resource guides. So we produce these guides in cooperation with all of our different local funding partners uh, all across the state. But our main guides are for Brookings, Aberdeen, the Sioux Empire, and the Black Hills. So this kind of just provides that starting point for resource information in these specific areas. So for example, on the right side, you'll see the Brookings area guides that we offer uh, are our basic needs guide, uh, which provides anything from clothing services to employment services to food and housing, uh, you name it. Um, and then a lot of those same services are listed in that next guide, our Helping Hand Emergency Resource Guide, if you're finding yourself in a tough place. And then lastly, we have that Brookings Area Mental Health Guide, which just has a really comprehensive list of different support groups, substance use groups, and counseling services all throughout the Brookings area, if you're looking to get connected with one of those types of groups. And you're able to find all of those and access them online at the website that's listed at the bottom there as well. 
Perfect. And just to wrap up, kind of a summary as we have a lot going on at the Helpline Center. Uh, it's now statewide as of about two or three weeks ago, which is really exciting before it was um, not offered completely across the state. So that's an awesome feature to have. Uh, but our three programs, the 211 Helpline, Volunteer Connections, and Suicide and Crisis Support. Uh, you can reach all of our programs simply by dialing 211, though, if that's too much to remember. Uh, we also have that suicide hotline if you or someone you know needs help finding hope uh, and then we can get you connected to any sort of volunteering opportunities that you're looking for in Brookings. So, thank you guys. Thank you, Allie. Uh, just to wrap up on the United Way and we really want to uh, be able to connect students and, and nonprofits in our community. So, Think about like when you're in a class and you need to do a class project. Um, sometimes there's those nonprofits out there that could use some assistance and maybe you guys can help them and get your project done. Um, the volunteering, a lot of times too for classes, you have to go and do some volunteer work, those types of things. So we really wanna help make that connection. So you can go to that website that Allie's in charge of here and be able to search. So if you're looking at two o'clock in the morning, you can find the information you're looking for. Um, and then also think about, um, you know, building that resume, whether you're looking for a, a specific type of internship or you're just looking to um, show that you, you were involved in doing some volunteering, you know, those kind of things um, can, can give you some some new, uh, a new focus on maybe what things that you enjoy or things that you thought you really wanted to do. And then you're like, Ooh, I really don't like to do that. I let's, what else is out there? So um, do feel free to reach out to the United Way and we can try to help make those connections for you guys. We typically have an intern um, at our office and then uh, work study and all of those types of things. So um, whatever kind of opportunities you're looking for, uh, feel, always feel free to reach out and we can help make that connection. Um, again, there is our email and phone number. And then um, uh, we'll put the plug in, follow us on Facebook, um, way to just see what's going on in the community and, and stay involved and there's all of our social media. I don't know what you call them. Social media avenues that you can get involved with us at. So, but thank you guys for, for joining and I appreciate the time. Awesome. Thank you, Heidi and Allie. Um, I think that clearly demonstrates to, I hope, um, the, the students that are new here, the depth and breadth of how much we care in the Brookings community. Clearly, there's a lot of, of great resources right there on campus for you, but those stretch out across the entire community. We value you students so much, uh, so glad that you're here. And really, if there is any problems or issues that you're having, there are many ways to raise your hand, or if you want to be a helpful person um, to help others, a wide variety of those, those areas to do it. So I, I always get excited when I hear Heidi and, and Allie talk because they're, they're doing so much good in the community. Just, it's, it's nice to be part of all of that. So speaking of good in the community, next we have uh, Laura uh, Schoen Carboneau. She is our Visit Brookings Director. Um, she is all about visiting, um, bringing events and activities uh, to Brookings, and so I will let her take it over from here. There we go. You knew someone was going to do it. Someone was going to not unmute themselves. But good afternoon, everyone. Laura Shane Carboneau. I am the executive director of Visit Brookings. So if you uh, just want to get used to everything in town. If you're new to the community, if you have family coming into the community, if you have friends who are coming to the community and you want to know where to eat, where to stay, what to do while they're in town, we are the people you want to visit with. So I'm going to do a little presentation of the insider's guide to Brookings. So bear with me for just a second. And uh, we're going to start with just a little video to show you. Hopefully it'll work. Hi, 
Okay, well, I'm just gonna move on from there, but um, just wanted to let you know. Oh, here we go. Sorry. The great thing about Brookings is we are a college town, but we're so much more. We're not just a town that's a university. We are a great mixture of both. So um, we jump right on into things that you might want to know about where to eat. There's uh, so many great restaurants in Brookings. Um, for some more of the unique flavor, we highly recommend stopping down at Nick's, uh, which is right downtown, Nick's Hamburger Shop. Uh, if you're looking for someplace a little fun to eat on the weekends, we recommend the Pheasant, which is down on South Main Street. They have some fantastic Nordic waffles and a bunch of other interesting things. Um, Craft, right on the corner of Madari and Sixth, is a, a place if, if you maybe you're looking for someone to go on a date. I highly recommend that as well. And of course, we have the things that everyone is familiar with, like uh, Jimmy John's, McDonald's, Dairy Queen, Perkins, uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, Applebee's, so a lot of really great choices for you. If you're looking for some coffee, uh, Cool Beans, there is a drive through, through location on 6th Street right near campus, as well as a spot downtown. Cottonwood Bistro, also near campus, or Cottonwood Coffee right downtown. Uh, Chocolate is in a strip mall near the mall or excuse me, near the uh, interstate. Uh, we also have scooters and Starbucks, which is near to campus as well. And if you're looking for a place to go after hours, uh, dinner up on the top of Cubby's, it's an open patio area, great place to have a, a quick bite to eat. And uh, Skinner's is also a neat area with the, the back patio area. So uh, just a couple places to recommend for you to take a look at there. I always want to know where to go where, and things to do there. There are so many things to do in Brookings. Uh, downtown, as Ashley mentioned before, a uh, lot of great, fantastic shops. It's just a really, really vibrant area, and I think you're going to enjoy that as college students. Um, uh, of course, great restaurants, great shops. Uh, we have parks, including the Dakota Nature Park. So if you like to kayak or fish, uh, that's uh, someplace you're going to want to check out. We have miles and miles of bike trails. Uh, if you are a person who likes to play golf, we have two courses in town. If you're a hockey player, Larson Ice Center is a place you'll become very familiar with. Uh, there's disc golf at Larson Park. And if you're just looking for some of more of the attraction areas, uh, the Children's Museum is just incredible. It's a wonderful gift for the community and granted most of you probably wouldn't be interested in doing some of the exhibits there but it's definitely worth a, an opportunity to go and just take a look what's there. If nothing else there's a really fun restaurant there that's a nice place to eat and it caters to all ages when it's open. I, I'm going to preface this by when all these things are open. Uh, we also have McCroy Gardens, which is part of South Dakota State University. You've probably div driven by that as well. Um, the South Dakota Art Museum, South Dakota Agriculture Heritage Museum, um, and of course the Campanile, you'll become very familiar with that. Uh, the Brookings County Outdoor Adventure Center is a fun place to go for archery and firearms range. Uh, the Swift House Center is off to the east side of the interstate. It's our largest event center or community area in Brookings and uh, a variety of concerts. The Beatles versus Stones is coming up on September 21st. In the uh, most recent history, Brett Young was here earlier this year, Kane Brown, Old Dominion, also several other large events. Those are just a few. Um, that's also the place where high school state tournaments are usually held. 
For instance, this fall in November, we'll be hosting the uh, girls volleyball tournament. So we're excited for that. And uh, rodeos, cattle shows, all kinds of great things happening at the Swift Health Center. Uh, there's also some other places that are fun, like a teed off and Woody's Axe Throwing, two separate businesses, but right next to each other, uh, bowling, movies, all of those kind of things. So there is always plenty of things to do in Brookings. If you are looking for ideas, we have some fun itineraries on our website. Uh, one of them is a Bring Your Appetite. We have another called Bring Your Friends. Um, so you can check those out if you'd like. We have a great eight passport, which uh, looks like what you see on your screen. You can pick those up at any of our great eight locations, many of which I just mentioned before, but uh, probably the, the easiest one to find for you as college students would be at Macquarie Gardens. Uh, you can take that around, visit all the locations, and then you can turn it in for a chance to win a $25 gift certificate. If nothing else, it's just a really fantastic way to get to know uh, Brookings and see the different things we have to offer. Uh, we also have an Artful Dozen. Ashley talked about that in conjunction with the mural project. Uh, so that's one of our Artful Dozen. But it's, a, it's really a great way to explore Brookings arts and culture scene. Uh, the Urban Canvas is the one downtown. But there's also statues around town that are worth noting, including Weary Will, Weary Will and Dirty Lil on campus. Uh, of course, there's always sporting events going on in Brookings, whether it's soccer, softball, baseball, hockey, golf, disc golf, all kinds of sporting events. And um, of course, the Outdoor Adventure Center. But there's also art classes and things like that at the Brookings Art Council. So if you are in need of finding more classes in addition to your college classes, uh, something to do for fun, there are plenty of opportunities. Here's some tools you can use. Check us out and also our social media challenges. We're always looking for some great photos. So um, if you're Instagramming and have a great photo, make sure you uh, hashtag us and we may be able to share those out for you as well and on any of our social media. So if you have great posts, we love to see them. Um, you can find things to do in the community on our calendar of events on our website, visit brookingssd.com. Uh, currently, the events are uh, few and far between for COVID, but um, we expect that calendar to really ramp up as things and when things start to get back to normal. And our visitor guide is a fantastic resource for people who want to know more about the community. We have hard copies in our office, but you can also download one on our visit website, our Visit Brookings SD website. One final note, uh, safety is as safety does. Our community absolutely is thrilled to have students back. We are hoping that all of us can work together to continue to be safe because the last thing we want is for classes to uh, go online or to send everybody home. So we are making an effort across the community to make sure that, that everybody, businesses, visitors, students, everybody takes a part in being safe. We've uh, rolled out the uh, Stay Safe Brookings Pledge and uh, you will start to see these. We're, we're just rolling it out right now but we're, we're really committing as a community to doing those things that we've all been hearing about ever since the beginning of the situation. Um, washing your hands, social distancing, um, wearing face masks when it's appropriate if you can't social distance, although some businesses actually do require the face mask. But as students going into these businesses, that's, a, that's what we're asking you to do as well. Um, make sure you stay home if you're not feeling good. Uh, all of those things that I think we're all familiar with, but um, it, it, it's worth repeating again and again, because like I said before, uh, we want to make sure that when you're here, it's a safe environment and we all uh, have a good, good experience and I have no doubt that we will. So I don't know that uh, we have an opportunity for questions right now. If not, we'll uh, certainly hold on to them at the end. But I do want to mention that um, our office right now is located on the right around on um, 8th Street South and Main Street. So if you find the Pheasant Restaurant, we're in a little strip mall right in that area. But in 16 days, we are moving to a new location on 6th Street. Um, right now, it's kind of a, a big brown building that's across the street from Jimmy John's. 
um, in 16 days that will have a whole new look. And if you have questions about the community, whether it's the Visit Brookings side or the Chamber of Commerce will be in the office as well. We certainly encourage you to stop down. We'd be happy to visit with you. And uh, there may be some volunteer opportunities in the future that uh, we might be interested in uh, visiting with you about as well. So thank you so much. Have a great year. We're so happy to have you in Brookings and uh, stop in and see us. Thanks, Laura. That was awesome. You were making me so hungry when you were talking about all these awesome restaurants in Brookings. It's, it's almost five o'clock. We're starting to get hungry. <laughs> exactly. Hey, one point I did want to mention, and I'm sure that they tell you this when you uh, sign up, but um, there are a variety of businesses that will take hobo dough. Um, and so take advantage of that as well. Usually they'll have stickers and things, but I'm sure, um, Justin, there's probably a listing somewhere for that as well. So again, just kind of another example of how the community really wants to support um, the students and make it as easy as possible. Yeah, I really um, would like to point to the community guide. I've lived in Brookings pretty much my whole life and I still find that so helpful because you might experience new restaurants that you've never been to or maybe you visit a park that you've not explored yet. And so really um, download that or maybe get a printed copy at Visit Brookings. So now we're going to share a little bit about Brookings Economic Development Corporation, but before we do that, we are going to do a little bit of trivia. So I'm going to get things pulled up on the computer. If you would like to take out your phone, get ready to scan a barcode, and we're going to do a little game, and there's a prize. And participants and presenters, if you would like to participate, you are more than welcome to. You really should. It's super fun. Before we do that, can someone like explain like what money goes where, like blocks, hobodo, and then flex? Yes. Justin, do you want to answer that question? So, uh, Rose, when you're looking at um, those different those different dollars, um, flex is going to be what you'd be using for on-campus meals. Hobo dough is what can be used um, at like the student union or uh, Chick-fil-A or your Panda Express if you're staying on campus, but also as they mentioned there's various uh, various businesses around Brookings that accept it. So I'm trying to think off the top of my head, I want to say Cubby's accepts it, if I remember correctly. Um, a couple other restaurants do, a couple other local establishments do as well. Um, but those are kind of the main two that you'll be working with. So Hobo Dough, it basically becomes like a separate debit card. Um, where you upload your money onto your student ID card and then that is with you wherever you go at any place that accepts it. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. Did that make sense? I think a couple other places, I know Jimmy John's might, Taco John's, I think I've seen it at Qdoba too. So just yeah, chocolate. So just different restaurants off campus that you can use the hobo dough. Um, so, all right. So if you have your phone out, you will screen the little QR code, pull up your camera. If you hit it, um, it will, I think, direct link you to this presentation. You should be able to see it on your phone as well. I'll give everybody a few minutes. Looks like we have three people on. Heidi, I have faith in you, even though technology is scary. You can do it. <laughs> it's for a prize, right? We're all competitive. Totally worth it. <laughs> Got it, Heidi. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so this is a very similar setup to Kahoot. So some of the questions you'll want to try to answer fast. Um, the faster you answer them, the more points you get. Um, there'll be a leaderboard kind of throughout some of these different questions. And then at the end, we'll have a winner. So our first question, or maybe it has us join here. Yep. Oh, we got them coming in. I love the little emoji cons. So cute. Yeah. 
maybe. Oh, one more. Here we go. Here we go. Doo -doo. <laughs> awesome. Woo! Woo! Okay, we'll get started. Everybody ready? Oh, no results yet. Okay. What are the three categories of focus for Brookings Area United Way? Can you talk about it? It looks like we have nine. There we go, 10. There we go. Health, education, and financial stability. All right, this is one for speed. What is the SDSU mascot's name? Good job. Nice Jack Rabbit. There are three ways to get involved with Brookings Area United Way mentioned in the presentation. So this is a true or false. Are they to advocate, give, and volunteer, or is it something else? All right, that correct answer is true. Okay, I'm about there. Have a good weekend. Thank you, you too. What ice cream flavor was invented at SDSU? Cookies and cream. What was the phone number for the helpline? Was it 211, 311, 911, or 611? Nice job, everybody got that one right. What major, what major broadcaster visited Brookings in the fall 2019? The correct answer is ESPN College Game Day. So this is a true or false question. Brookings is located along the I-90 corridor. I'm so bad with road names and everything. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. So it is actually false. Brookings is located along the I-29 corridor. Good question. The three categories, oh, it looks like we already did this one, I think. Oh no, the three categories of focus for the Helpline Center is the 211 Helpline, Volunteer Connections, and Suicide and Crisis Support. True. So it looks like Rose is our winner. Congratulations, little party. Whoop, whoop. So Rose, after this, we'll follow up. Um, we'll get your email and then we have a prize with 
coffee mugs, we have a flash drive, a lanyard, and then we have a gift card to the Cottonwood Bistro. Um, lots of students like to hang out there, study. It's a great place to get a coffee, a scone, and just really um, study and do those different activities. Thank you. So we're also gonna do a little interactive activity. You've heard us talk about Brookings, why we love Brookings, all the fun things to do here in our community. Um, after hearing this presentation, how would you describe Brookings? And I believe there's an option to type in three separate words. And once these words are submitted, it will do a fun little word cloud. So when we think about Brookings, we would say it's very unique, energetic, visionary. Um, our downtown's very vibrant, exciting, active. Ooh, home, joyful, Love, go blue. friendly, go blue, collaborative, vibrant welcoming, energetic. I love it. Creative, fun, helpful, exciting. So typically the larger the word, the more responses. So it's nice to see friendlies, a larger word in, within the group. Yes. All great adjectives. Nice job, everybody. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about our organization here at BEDC, and Jennifer is gonna give us a little bit of an overview as to what our organization does and provide some information like that. All right. Um, I know we're kind of running close on time here, so I will uh, try to be quick. Um, we have really four main areas that we focus on, um, the community enrichment, uh, business, whether that's recruitment, retention, expansion, um, workforce needs, and entrepreneurship. So um, our role for um, economic development within the organization is to really try to make Brookings the best place that it can be, and that includes a variety of things. Um, you'll we'll think a lot of amenities such as retail places and um, restaurants and places to eat, but making sure that we have diverse um, job offerings through our different varieties of industries and businesses, um, safety, security, just making sure all of those things are, are working um, as best they can and collaborating when we do that with every one of the other partners that have been on this call today. So, yeah, so we have some really great resources here on um, BEDC's website. We'll kind of talk a little bit about those. Um, when the time is right to start looking for different jobs or maybe exploring some different career pathways within um, your areas of interest, we have a lot of really great resources. So on our website, liveinbrookings.com, we have a list of different internships. We have a list of different um, businesses and organizations that are available to do different job shadowings, which are great ways to really um, experience some different varieties of jobs. Um, good way to see what you like, what you don't like, um, some of those different aspects. And so we have a resource that will kind of direct you to some of these businesses that want to help you grow and experience um, areas of interest, help you explore and navigate through some of those different things as you um, spend your time here in Brookings. We also have a local job board, which we've had a lot of employers over the last couple of weeks post a lot of part-time positions. So if you are in um, the position to apply for a job, or maybe it's something that you look at doing um, in the future, jobsinbrookings.com is an excellent resource. We also have a Facebook page. We're constantly updating that um, pretty much on a daily basis there. And again, we have part-time positions, internships, and a lot of really great student-friendly employment opportunities there to check out. All right, and my area of focus with BEDC is entrepreneur support. And one of the programs that I lead up is called the Idea Advisor. And I typically have an office space on campus on Tuesdays within the student union. Um, that may end up being more of a virtual office hours this year, um, but I want to hear, if you've got an idea for something, I wanna hear about it, because we have a really great ecosystem put together to support entrepreneurs um, with any idea that they wanna kind of 
test the waters on. So whether your idea has something to do with what you're studying at school or if it's something completely unrelated, um, we just want to hear about it and see if we can help you um, advance that forward. So again, free consultations uh, on campus, but I'm happy to meet off campus in our office here um, where we're located at the research park, um, but Zoom meetings as appropriate as well. You can see a little bit more about that at startupbrookings.com. And then to kind of go along with that as well, I also oversee our community makerspace. And so if you um, need some of that technical equipment to, to advance that idea, you can certainly become a member. Or if you just like to create um, and build and make things, uh, this makerspace is a member based. So it's $15 a month for students, which is actually just three cups of coffee at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. um, and our hours are 6 a.m. to midnight, seven days a week. So you would have access to equipment like 3D printing, 3D scanning, laser engraving, um, electronics, bench, a complete wood shop. So really uh, anything that you can think of to create, you can do it there. So I'm um, happy to give tours on that, but take a look. We've got a, a nice video on our website at makingbrookings.com. Here is a little map um, for you to figure out how to find Sarah, I, and the Makerspace. So um, from the heart of campus there at the Union, basically you head east um, and hit, uh, go through that first cul-de-sac there by in between Frost and the Performing Arts Center and keep going on uh, 22nd Avenue there or up to 22nd Avenue, taking a left and then it's your next right and it's the research park. Uh, you'll see a large brick building with a curved entrance and that's us. We're the first office right when you walk in. Come check us out sometime. <laughs> So we also have a student newsletter to keep you up to date on local events, different jobs in Brookings, volunteer opportunities, just a wide variety of things for um, you to get introduced to Brookings. And so if you're interested in signing up for that B Town Buzz newsletter, um, on your cell phone, it should pop up with a little um, opt-in tab. You'll want to type in your name and then your email address and we'll get you added to the list. And I did want to note if you're plugging this in on your phone, I think you have to put in a period on the top comment box. Just a goofy thing on this. Yeah, a little bit system. of a glitch we discovered. So. And that is what we have here today. It's a lot of information, um, but thankfully, as Justin mentioned, it's recorded. You can go back and play it back. You can take a look at all those great website links, um, all those contacts. And I, I feel confident in being able to speak for everybody um, in the panel group here today. We're happy to answer questions whenever you have them. So please don't, don't hesitate. Absolutely. And thank you so much, everyone, for uh, participating. Thank you so much for our representatives from the city of Brookings, uh, United Way Economic Development, and anyone I might have missed because there's so many of you and it's so exciting to see uh, just how open and amazing everyone is here in Brookings for the students here and for any students that are going to be watching the recording. No, there's a reason why folks like me move here and then stick around. And there's reason why folks like the people presenting today, many of them have lived there the majority of their lives. Uh, and they love it here and there's a reason why they stay. So really appreciative of that. I do want to leave a little bit of time. I know we're a little late, but if anyone has any questions right now, feel free um, to ask them. If not, uh, hopefully Sarah can pass along contact information to me via email and I'll upload that. Um, I'll make sure that that'll be accessible somewhere. So does anyone have any questions though? I think it's after five. We might have lost a few people along the way, but go ahead and open that up. All right. Well, with that in mind, um, thank you all so much again for being willing to present. Um, I know it was a little bit, little bit of a wrench to have move-in day happen today, but I'm so glad that we had some participation. I'm so glad that we're going to uh, be able to really distribute this out to others. So thank you again so much. Um, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording now. But I think, Rosemary, you've got a swag bag to, to make sure you can pick up. 